Hi, everyone. I've got Jeff Clark with me. Jeff, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Mike. And we wanted to jump on a call here this evening, didn't we? Because of what happened in the markets today. So I'm going to give you a brief rundown of what happened. And then I want to get your reaction and a few questions for you. So uh, basically, as I think uh, most of our viewers know, the silver price really spiked today. It opened the day and went up as much as 6.8%. What was its biggest one day gain uh, since last August, since almost half a year ago? Um, it ended up the day at 4.8% um, uh, gain when it closed. Uh, so what happened was basically the Reddit community, and this is, I, I think a lot of our viewers are probably familiar with it. The internet chat rooms there on Reddit uh, decided to do something similar to what they did with GameStop and some of the other stocks. And that is to um, drive the price higher and force some short covering. And we're going to talk about um, this a little bit. And we're also going to, I'm also going to talk about First Majestic Silver because they had a short squeeze today as well. Uh, but Mike, just in general terms, what's your reaction to um, the Reddit community taking on silver and driving the price higher? Well, it's a much, much bigger market than GameStop, I believe. Uh, but it is a tiny, tiny market. Uh, you know, um, uh, Eric Sprott, years ago, I mean, I put this in my book, Eric Sprott of Sprott Asset Management says that Wall Street needs the little guy. Wall Street needs the little guy to feed off of in order to survive. And that the, uh, the little guy, the small investor is the plankton of the financial world. <laughs> and in my book I, I wrote, I was writing about leverage and that you're in a professional's game if you're using leverage. So if you want to be the plankton of the financial world, go ahead and use leverage without an education. But if you do, just know that it is quite likely that they will slaughter you, carve you up, and dine on your financial carcass. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. Well, uh, um, there are people that are using leverage to play this GameStop thing. Now, I think it is great what they have done with GameStop because they're sort of uh, teaching, you know, I, I very often see these big funds and, and uh, the Wall Street elite as sort of raping and pillaging their way through the economy. Uh, they get to, uh, they, they con a lot of people and they take things. I mean, most retail investors end up losing or retail traders. And on the other side of those trades is the Wall Street uh, elite that get the inside uh, scoop. They get to know what's happening. They get to keep what they're uh, talking about, their trades, a secret uh, when it comes to hedge funds and the private wealth management and so on. And there is a, a phenomenal uh, interview on CNBC that is, I believe, a must watch for everybody. Uh, there's a guy named Chama Palahepatia. And uh, he's being interviewed by Scott Wapner. And boy, does he wallops Scott Wapner and gives Wapner a whipping. <laughs> <laughs> no, I saw uh, and now Scott Wapner is, is a journalist. He's not like uh, a big Wall Street guy or anything. But you can see that he was sort of coming to the party with a, a viewpoint from you know, that Wall Street angle. And since then... Uh, we've seen people chime in uh, on this, like uh, Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez, this is unacceptable. We need to know more about the Robinhood app's uh, decision to block retail investors from purchasing stock while hedge funds are freely able to trade the stock as they see fit. As a member of the Financial Services Committee, I'd support a hearing if necessary. And that's a reply to uh, Motherboard say, saying, more than half of all Robinhood users own at least some GameStop stock. Now they are unable to trade it, to freely trade it. The app is only allowing users to close out their positions. Well, that is the same thing. This, this happened to the Hunt Brothers uh, during the run-up uh, on, on silver in 1980, the COMEX, the Commodities Exchange, 
put in place a rule saying there was liquidation orders only. So they could only close out the positions. There was no new orders that were allowed that were long, you know, so you could close out a position. Well, if all there is is sellers and there's no buyers, the stock has to go, it has to go down. And after that, this stock has crashed. Uh, it went down significantly. Um, the thing that started this, there's something called Wall Street Bets. And basically uh, on reddit.com, there's people that are chatting about it and they found this stock that is one of the most shorted stocks that there is. I think it's the most shorted stock or was. And <clears throat> they were short 140% of the shares. Now, um, when you short a stock, the brokerage house is lending you shares of stock that you then sell into the market. So you're now short those shares. You don't have them. You've sold them. You owe them back, but you don't have them. And if, you, if it goes down, you get to buy them back at a lower price than you sold them for and you make the profit. But, but here they sold, say there's a hundred shares that exist and the broker goes and borrows those shares and gives you 140 of those hundred shares that exist. And you sell those 140 shares <laughs> into the market. And that's exactly what happened. This is the Wall Street magic, how they are able to uh, rig these rules and stuff so that they can actually sell 140% of the existing shares of a company uh, short. And uh, I mean, uh, these rules are so warped and so tilted toward the advantage of these big funds and they're using leverage. So when that stock rises, if they've used leverage at, at uh, if it was just as a picking a wild number, if it was 10 to one leverage, if it rises a buck, they're losing 10 bucks when that stock rises. Well, all these little investors got together and started buying. They just went long. Uh, now, you know, I, if, if you don't know what you're doing, you shouldn't use leverage. But I really like this, that the small investors ganged up on the, the Wall Street elite that has been raping and pillaging them for years, for decades. <laughs> And for a short while, they gave them a whipping. Right. That's that's good. Uh, Mike, I personally like it. I like the small guy being able to succeed like this. Of course, I like the action in the silver price today. But uh, Mike, is this sustainable? Do you think this continues? Uh, the Reddit community seems pretty committed to this, at, at least as far as silver goes. Um, but is this sustainable? Do you see this continuing? Uh, well, the problem is the um, the friends of the Wall Street elite uh, are changing the rules of the game. Uh, Robinhood, which is supposed to be the app for the small guy, has uh, shown their true colors and uh, not allowing the small investor to continue buying so that it pushes up the stock price and causes more pain on the short side, causing these big funds to have to lock in there are enormous losses and cover. And when you buy, when they cover, when you buy, the uh, stock goes up even more. But, you know, when uh, this thing with Ted Cruz and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez came out and they were in agreement, <laughs> our producer director, Dan Rubach, wrote, Neil deGrasse Tyson's voice, this is how black holes are formed. <laughs> and Ryan McLemmons, who uh, people don't know who he is, but he runs a, a whole, he's responsible for a whole lot of the inner workings of goldsilver.com. And he does a fantastic job. So a big shout out to Ryan. But he said, yeah, something in the universe just broke and something in the Wall Street financial elites universe did break today when they found themselves losing to the uh, small investors, the plankton of the financial world, we're suddenly ganging up and eating the sharks. Yeah, that's good. Uh, so Robin Hood claims that it was more of a clearinghouse issue and some of the other, and there were other brokerages that were impacted as well. Um, they also claim they're going to open up trading again tomorrow, uh, Friday for that. But possible, Mike, possible. Um, but is, is it a clearinghouse issue? Because, I mean, was it the clearinghouses doing something that needed to be done to stop the bleeding of these big hedge funds. 
right now I'm on ino.com that does quotes and stuff. And I'm at gamestockcorp.com. Uh, and <laughs> it's got this crazy number that I don't understand. Maybe somebody that's better at math than I am can explain it to me. It says that the stock is currently down 1,330.25%. Right, which is impossible, now, right. If it's at 100 and it, it, it's down 100% from 100, or if it's at a million, it doesn't matter what the price is. If it's down 100%, you've lost everything. It's at zero, right? <laughs> How can it be down 1,330%? But that's what it says. I mean, there's, there were huge declines so any of these big funds that were short that didn't have to cover, uh, that still hadn't reached their margin, margin limits and stuff, they could put on more shorts. Uh, and then there's uh, mysteriously the, the what, what did you say was the problem again? The, um, they say it was the clearinghouse, clearinghouse. clearinghouse okay. issue. They then, then suddenly the clearinghouse that works with these big funds all the time has a problem, has a problem. Right. <laughs> so, but so my my biggest fear, Mike, though, is uh, just today, um, Nancy Pelosi came out and said, we're going to have to look into the uh, GameStop yes. issue. Uh, us and Congress, she actually said Congress and yeah. her are going to have to look into it. So my fear is that the government is going to get more involved, even though us retail investors are on the right side of this are, and are mm -hmm. in the right and have been very transparent, by the way, where the Reddit users have been very transparent about what they want. Um, yes, my, and the they're going to use it. Never let a good crisis go to waste. They're going to use this uh, to create rules that, in, um, that limit the retail investor more instead of giving him more freedom. Uh, in this interview, he's really standing up for the little guy. And one of the things that he's talking about is how opaque all of the big hedge funds are and the private investor uh, money, the big accounts, uh, they don't have to disclose any of their positions. Uh, and so all he wants is a level playing field for everybody, but what they're going to do, yes, you're absolutely right, Jeff, they're going to uh, uh, use this as a way to limit the small investor even more and tilt the rules even more toward the, uh, uh, institutionalizing the rape and pillage of the small investor. Yes, yes, that that's my biggest fear, and I don't want to see them get any more involved than they already are in the markets. You know, especially the gold and silver markets, of course. But um, any other advantages to this, or disadvantages, or anything else you want to comment on this movement that seems to have sprung up here just suddenly, Mike? Well, there's uh, a couple of things, you know, this, it's, this is stuff to learn from. And you got to look at uh, things like this that have happened in history. And there are a number of them. Uh, first, you know, Pelosi says we'll be uh, reviewing the issue. They, they changed, in order to stop this, they changed margin requirements, restricted as, 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 <clears throat> access, uh, blocking position building and widespread common condemnation of it. And this has caused, so after they changed the rules, the, the price of this stock has, has plummeted. And any of these hedge funds that added more shorts at the top are probably now in a, in a profit. And that profit comes at the expense of the small investors that were, uh, you know, they were uh, switching the tables, they were, they were uh, the shoe was on the other foot for a little while. The small investor got to rape and pillage <laughs> the, uh, the big hedge funds and so on just for a little while. It's very exciting to see. And then uh, there's, it, it led to um, discussions on the biggest short squeeze in the world is basically silver. And, uh, you know, they're talking about SLV and uh, some of these other funds and stuff. But one of the things that I see is uh, the, this article on Reddit where they're trying to encourage a silver short squeeze. Uh, they're saying that the amount of physical silver, the, the, the uh, ratio of physical silver to the paper trading that's going on and all of the, um, the manipulation is the manipulation is many, 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 it's a bigger short uh, opportunity 
than uh, GameStop was actually. And this is true, but it is a lot bigger market and it takes, uh, it would take a lot more cash from the uh, small investment community than it took to do this with GameStop. And so uh, for me, and I'm not saying this as a precious metals dealer, I'm saying this as an investor in the position that I've always taken, is I don't play with any of the uh, derivatives of physical gold and silver, such as SLV, GLD, uh, futures, options. Uh, well, GLD isn't silver, that's gold. Uh, but I stick with physical silver. And the more physical silver you can take away from the market, the more vulnerable uh, that this manipulation becomes uh, to a penetration like this. And when it does, it'll skyrocket. And they're talking about silver going from 25 bucks to $1,000 here. Uh, you know, and I've basically been saying this for many, many years. Back in uh, 2005, I think it was, I went up to an event in Dawson, Canada, up in the Arctic Circle where the Klondike Gold Rush was. It was called Gold Rush 21. And there were rep representatives from many countries. And uh, this was to try and end the gold manipulation. And John Embry was speaking. John Embry, I loved John Embry. He used to be with Sprott Asset Management. He was uh, one of their and chief investment strategists at Sprott, Sprott Asset Management. And um, uh, he had, was finishing up a talk. And at the end, there were some questions and answers. And I stood up and I said, uh, John, could the men in this room, by buying physical gold, uh, end the gold manipulation? And he said, no. And I said, could the men in this end? One woman stood up and said, hey, men and women. <laughs> so I said, could the men and women in this room uh, uh, end the gold manipulation by buying silver and exposing the silver manipulation and therefore it would overflow into gold? And he said, yes, we could absolutely do that. Except this was a meeting on how to expose the gold manipulation and nobody else in the room liked that idea because it had to do with silver. But it was interesting. I mean, that goes back to 2005, trying to end this. Now, one day it will come to an end. We're getting to a very tippy point in this uh, economy that's a total illusion at this point. Uh, the, the Federal Reserve has created this, uh, this chimera, chimera, whatever you call it, uh, this illusion of an economy that's doing well, and it isn't. Um, you know, one of the things uh, in this uh, short squeeze, the limits on trading that they put, where you can't go long, you can only close out position. I want to encourage everybody to go and watch a video that I did a, a while ago called The Surprising Truth About $50 Silver and the Hunt Brothers. And in this interview, I did make a, mis a couple of mistakes. And I said gold, my mind was thinking silver, but gold came out of my mouth. But basically, the Hunt Brothers, I believe, were used as scapegoats. I interviewed Jeff Christian years ago uh, of CPM Group. He said, and he's one of the experts on this, and he said the Hunt Brothers at most uh, added 50 to 75 cents to the silver price. So when people say, oh yeah, 1980, that was when the Hunt Brothers drove silver up to 50 bucks. No, that was, watch this video. There's lots of evidence of this. The Hunt Brothers used, were, were used as scapegoats to stop the runaway in gold, which threatens all fiat currencies. And we did come close to losing the US dollar way back then. And um, another video that I would really like to point people to, uh, I did a video a little while back called uh, 1929 versus now. And John Hussman uh, tweeted out today and uh, he wrote about the tragedy of how the Fed is encouraging a market where investors don't consider price in the investment process anymore. So they're not considering what the value is. And he put up a quote from Benjamin Graham, who was a famous stock trader back in the 20s and 30s, and David L. Dodd, securities analysts. And this is from 1934. And it says, during the latter stage of the bull market culminating in 1929, the public acquired a completely different attitude 
toward the investment merits of common stocks. Why did the investment investing public turn its attention from dividends, from asset values, from the average earnings to transfer it almost exclusively to the earnings trend, the trend being up, to the change in earnings expected in the future? The answer was first that the records of the past were providing an undependable guide to investment. And that's exactly what's going on today. This was written in 1934. So to analyzing things logically has no uh, correlation with what the stock market is doing these days. And second, that the rewards offered by the future had become irresistibly alluring. And that is exactly what is happening today. And that's exactly what led to the crash of 20 years. That led to the blow off top, the peak of the stock market, and then the crash. And so we're seeing all of this. And what will happen is as investors seek safety, uh, it's going to cause gold and silver to go up. And silver has such a short interest compared to the amount of available inventory to deliver. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's one of the great opportunities. So. Uh, give me your thoughts on that. Well, yeah, I agree. Um, and, and short covering, for those who don't know, basically there are investors that have went short on a security or a stock or whatever. And a short squeeze is when enough people go long and drive the price up. Some of those shorts are forced to cover, which means they have to buy the stock. And yes, Mike, that's stop also- their losses because they're bleeding and they got to stop the bleeding. So they have to buy it back. And that causes it to go higher when they buy. And right, then, uh, and and then other people that are short have to cover because it keeps on going up and up and up. Right, so that's what a short squeeze it it, it can push the price higher of any security than it would otherwise normally go. So just real quick on First Majestic Silver, I, I said we would mention that they had a short squeeze as well today. Um, now we're bullion dealers. Uh, full disclosure: I own the stock, but we don't recommend it to anyone or anything like that, but it had a very interesting short squeeze. You can see in the chart, I think Dan will throw up for us that it was at record high levels in its short positions. And it got on the Reddit boards as well. Last night, it jumped in the after hours. It jumped up today uh, big time. It ended the day up uh, 21%. So with such a large short position, that can drive the stock as well. And, and that's what happened to them. They also had a favorable uh, ruling down in Mexico. They have a tax issue there. Um, I tweeted out about that. Um, it's just round one, but they said they're not gonna be criminally charged. That was a positive for the stock as well. And that probably added to the momentum. So again, we're not recommending the stock, but that's what happened to it. And I know a lot of people own it. Um, and so we thought we'd comment on it as well. So. Well, Mike, we don't want to go on too much uh, longer here. It's been a long video, but uh, thank you for joining me. And um, uh, we live in interesting times, don't we? We definitely do, Jeff. Thank you so much. Uh, it's, it has been a, a phenomenal day, and it has been rewarding uh, seeing the small investors uh, suddenly take control and cause Wall Street to be in a defensive position. And I mean, we, we have shaken up their world. Uh, Ryan was right when something in the universe just broke. Yes, right. And uh, that process is probably not over. So, okay, Mike, thank you very much. And we'll uh, see you on the next video. Okay, thank you, Jeff.